All right. Pardon me. Welcome, everyone. People are starting to drift in virtually, that is. Um, I'm just going to give it another minute or two and see, uh, see if we get a few people hopping on. It's only about two minutes after, so let's give folks another minute or two, and then we'll, we'll kick this off. All right, why don't we get going, everybody? Everybody that's been here on time should get rewarded without having to wait any longer. Um, my name is Kevin Foote. I'm a member of the uh, committee uh, that, uh, <clears throat> for the Chicago Race to Mackinac. Welcome everybody uh, to this evening's webinar. Uh, you have uh, Nick and Kieran from Predict Wind who are our, uh, our, I was about to say resident, but the opposite of that because they're on the uh, pretty much the polar opposite end of the globe. Uh, Predict Wind is uh, headquartered in New Zealand. That's where both Nick and Kieran are. So I'd like to wish them a good morning, uh, as well as everybody here a good evening. Uh, we're going to focus today on departure planning uh, with weather routing. Um, one thing that might be helpful, a couple of things that will be helpful. Number one, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the Q&A while we're going on. Kieran will be uh, monitoring that and should be able to get you answers as we're going through everything. Second, it would probably be good to have a quick uh, sort of show of hands in a way, and we can put that in the chat. Uh, interest in from power boaters or power boating versus sail or sailing. That might help Mick steer uh, steer the boat, as it were, steer the conversation along. So please put something like that in the chat. Uh, I'll total those up. Nick, you don't have to worry about it. I'll just jump in or message you quickly uh, at some point when we have a sort of a consensus there. With that, I'm going to hand it to Nick and Kieran. Um, take it away. Awesome. Thanks very much. As always, it's a great privilege to be here and to be able to um, you know, hopefully teach everybody something new. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so we're really going to talk about departure planning and, um, you know, for any passage, um, it's it's good to do. Uh, obviously, usually when we come here, we talk about yacht racing and, you know, we cover weather routing and, and, and stuff like that. And the departure planning um, tool that we have is does use the weather routing algorithm as such and um but we use it in a different way um and and so we'll go through how that works and um how what you know why that's relevant and i guess we'll sort of start there so i'll just actually jump into a screen share and nope i just need to find the right this always happens. There we are. Don't even want that one. I want this one. So, yeah, what we, you know, obviously before we depart, in fact, I'll come over here. Let's let's start right at the beginning. Um, You know, any big passage, obviously when we do a race, we don't have a choice about when we start. And you'll often see that... Um, you know, yacht races often make headlines for when they 
uh, run into bad weather or, you know, quite extreme weather. And then, you know, so that's something that the rest of the time when we're choosing to go somewhere uh, at our leisure and for our pleasure, we don't we don't leave when we're going to sail into these conditions or we do our best to avoid them. And we would start by doing that to look, you know, this is all about looking for a weather window and and how we find that weather window for our passage and, and then what we might encounter along the way and do, you know, um, could we avoid that? So really the first thing we would do is we would look at the big picture situation you know, we might come and look at our isobar maps and look and look for, and I'll zoom out a bit more. You know, do we have, is there low pressure coming in? Is there, you know, um, squish zones between the isobars um, over the next period? And we might try and look for a, um, a time when we have a large uh, area of high pressure uh, building, you know, or just after a system's gone through, because uh, usually then we're going to get a more settled period. And you know, we, you know, often you're used to seeing the H's and L's on the on the map. Well, we know, um, we know what they are because we can look on the map at the at, at the pressure and see whether it's high pressure, low pressure, um, and we can also look for rain to see whether there's been, uh, you know, a particular system go through which looks like you guys are about to get, um, well, up the top of the lake anyway. So you are not going to get it. You're going to miss it. Um, and so but we would look through this and really look for a clear window. And you might do that lots of ways. You might go, uh, you know, look at lots of resources. You might look at your local, you know, you might watch the news and watch your local weatherman and, and, he, and you know, they talk about the upcoming week and sometimes explain some features that you might not pick up in here. Um, we can also look at um, our GMDSS stuff uh, and we can read through that. Um, you know, you might look at a whole lot of different resources to sort of look at your real big picture weather window. Are we going to have stable weather over the next week or are we going to have unstable weather and you know there's a um you know big low pressure system moving through um there's you know all, all sorts of weather events so we need to kind of make a um a decision on our, our our extended window and then we can move into uh our boat specific stuff so once you sort of find a period that you think is going to be good then we can actually move into our tools so, and you can, I would, you know, practice looking at this stuff all the time. I mean, I'm a obviously a weather fan. Um, the first thing I do in the morning is look at the weather. Um, and so I'm on my app, on my phone, you know, before I get to bed, I'm looking at the weather. So looking at the weather all the time, you will learn um, a whole lot just by doing that. So if you turn up and look at the weather the day before you are about to depart on a trip, who knows what you're gonna, what you're gonna get. Uh, so, and probably another thing to look at is that we do have a, uh, a a seasonal tool. So much like a pilot chart. So whether you're doing this um, in Chicago or whether you're doing this out on the ocean, same method would would uh, apply. And so we can come in here into this our local knowledge feature, and you'll see that there's a, a, a passage here, and I and it's the same for any location, and I can look at seasonal weather. I mean, obviously there's going to be some uh, super obvious stuff to you. I mean, you probably want to be doing it in your summer anyway, but if you're doing this somewhere else where you don't normally spend time, getting this sort of information uh, initially is is uh, you know really helpful. And we can see we've got um, the race to Mackinac in here. And if I just click on that, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, is this historical weather data. And so we can see that you know for uh, August, this is our um, you know our windrows, and we can see you know nine percent of the time 
the probability is is this is ten years uh, of historical weather average. Uh, yeah, we can see you know it's five to ten knots, nine percent of the time from the southwest, four uh, percent of the time, ten to fifteen, etc. And so it's not averages, and it's not super high. It's not you know we're more likely to get these stronger winds from uh, you know or prevailing direction is from the southwest. And so I can actually come and look at that for any month of the year. And I can look at the data um, for any month. So I can look at September, for instance, and you see we actually get a slightly different um, average over that over that uh, passage that we're looking at there. You can actually look at individual spots as well, but um, you know, useful if you are going somewhere else. And so I'll just close that up. Uh, Anyway, so let's sort of assume that we have uh, done that analysis, and we really want to. What we're here for today is to look at tools, and um, and and think about how we can use these tools. So, as I say, this is relevant wherever you are, um, and can make a huge difference. I mean, I just had a friend of a friend has uh, just sailed back from Fiji. And my friend rang me and he said, oh, what do you think of this? And I looked at it for honestly five minutes. I said, I think they're stupid uh, because I could see that in five days time, there was a five days time, there was a massive system coming across the top of New Zealand. And for a, for a start, we could have just looked at that and gone, well, that's probably a bad idea. But, you know, the, you looked at the wind speed and it wasn't too bad. And then we, I ran the route and I could see in all the wave data that they were just going to get smashed. And uh, I heard yesterday that they are they're very unhappy <laughs> and they're okay. But, um, you know, it's been a very unpleasant trip for them. And so that's that's why we're here. We're going to try and avoid these situations. And so these these we're looking at we're looking for all sorts of parameters and the the we can look at a wind map or a wave map and go, oh yeah, I think it's about that. But if we use a tool, it can alert us to all sorts of things, you know, from, um, you know, our GMDSS stuff, we will see uh, any warnings come up and also our extreme weather warnings, um, you know, thunderstorms, um, you know, high, high winds, just stuff that you may or may not pick up on, wind chill, uh, they all show up in our extreme warnings. So we can see all that stuff in our uh, departure planning tool. And yeah, so let's go and have a look at it. So you see here we have the weather routing, the ocean data, departure planning, GPS tracking, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, we're going to look at the departure planning tool. And what you will, if you've done any uh, weather routing before, uh, you'll, this will look very familiar to you because it is the exact same setup. Now, we're not going to talk about polars a whole lot, but I will explain to you what polars are. And um, so a polar is essentially how fast we think your vessel is going to go in any given conditions. Now, that's very yacht specific. Uh, I had a discussion with our development manager yesterday about, you know, for powerboats, it's not even, you know, do we even use the word polar? You know, is that somewhat misleading, um, given the context that we use it for in, in, in yacht racing, because we're, we're actually interested in, in different things. And so we will, we will look at that. So before we can uh, run our departure plan, we do need to look at our planning preferences. And so you'll see here, I've got a yacht set up. So a predefined polar and I've got my yacht. Um, and if I press this button, that copy to advanced, and I click on that advanced polar, you see this quite complex table of uh, wind speeds and true wind directions and boat speeds. And so that's great if you are a sailor. Um, and, you know, you can come in here and you can select your boat type and you can adjust that uh, and, and um, you know, get that as close as possible to how your boat sails. Um, 
and I guess this might be a good time to know how many power boaters we have. Um, but we do have. So, so Nick, I just uh, I just dropped you a chat. So far, it's uh, it's even the people that have uh, thrown their preference out there between power boaters and sailors. Awesome. Um, Perfect. So uh, specifically, two two items to throw in there that are specific. One of the power boaters was uh, mentioning mo mainly power boating on the east coast of the United States. Um, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of what you're doing may translate. Um, and one of the sailors specifically mentioned the return from Mackinac, bringing the boat back to the Chicago area after the race to Mackinac. And yep. um, if you want to get into some of that, uh, I, I think or some other folks can probably give you a little bit of a, uh, an idea and the guidance as to how some of that, some of the details on that work. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, really what we're talking about here is understanding uh, the tool. And and I think if we understand the tool, then we can apply it to any situation. Um, so we'll just keep keep running through it. And um, But I will, uh, I, I, yeah, we won't look at the the uh, the yacht. We'll, we'll run we'll run stuff for both. Uh, but we won't dwell on the um, the yacht polars so much. We will have a, a bit of a little bit of a discussion on the powerboat stuff because it is different. So you'll see here we have the we have our yacht polar, and if I click on this button here and I press power, uh, so this uses a different algorithm to the yacht one, and you'll see we have a different set up and so we we are assuming a few things here um and there's some inputs that you have to put in okay and so we want to know the um we want to know about your boat basically uh and so if we we want to know the height of your um boat and so basically what we're looking at there is your your wind profile like how much drag is 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 the profile of your boat inducing? Uh, we want to know your your cruising speed. You know, if you're going to do a passage that's, you know, two hundred miles or or whatever it is, which what speed are you going to? Um, what's your cruising speed? Your economic boat speed, as we call it here, uh, and the RPM, and what that fuel com consumption is, and we'll give you some outputs based on that. Um, and so this will, for the wind and the wave, it will actually uh, model your uh, the drag and your speed. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty clever what's going on there. So it's pretty new what we're doing here, um, but it is it is very cool, and it'll also give us the same outputs that we were looking for um, in our sailboat routing. Uh, so yeah, and then once again we will model your boat uh and under the water so we want to know the displacement the waterline length the beam and the draft um so we put all of that information in for our power boat and we can get some um you know some some good outputs uh and just like our other routing you can ch uh put a depth avoidance in uh so that the router isn't trying to take you into shallow water so let's run a powerboat um, departure plan um, and and see how we get on. I haven't done this. I, I haven't I haven't run through this for this passage. Um, and yeah, and for the yacht stuff, we'll run another one as well. But it's the same uh, that you know. Really, what we want to look at here is our uh, outputs. So we've got that set up so that we can um, run a run a route. And um, yeah, so let's do that. Uh, you'll see over here, just before we actually run it, that we have this little time box. And so I can space my departures. So if I was doing a short passage, uh, I might want to look at whether I left in the morning or the afternoon is better. So I could put that by one or two hours um, or, you know, or afternoon, or you know, or morning or night, um, but let's just look at it for the next um, four days because we get four outputs, and um, see how we go. So we've got twenty four hour spacing there, uh, and we can also change our start time. So 
you know, we'll, we'll, we'll run it as now. So we'll just come over here and press download. Oh, what I should mention, just like in our um, weather routing, we need to set up our start waypoint and our end waypoint. And um, we can, you know, if we as we move those there, we see our lat long move and um, we can actually set that to our GPS position. I'm not going to do that because I'm in New Zealand. But if I press that little button, it'll take us to where we are, uh, which can be pretty handy. That's the uh, GPS coming from your device. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super worried about our actual route because, yeah, we want to talk about the tool. And so if we talk about the tool, then you guys can apply this anywhere. So let's click on download. And it is now calculating uh, our route for the next four days. So if we departed now, if we departed this time tomorrow, the next day, and the next day at this time of the day. So we can actually change that time that we wanted to, to put the start time in. And um, and you'll see there that it's run our route. Uh, we're a powerboat, so we're, 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 we're going, uh, looks like we're taking a pretty direct route, which is good. If I just zoom in, you will see that there's some slight variation there. Um, and we'll just, uh, we'll just, I just want to see which day that is. Yeah, so it's our fourth day. I see it's, it's probably it's probably trying to uh, avoid these winds, these headwinds, and keep us out of the out of the way. So, yeah, that's great. We've got this like map, and the boat zooms across it. Not really what we use this tool for. So we actually, once we've um, decided on a departure time, we will then come and run a weather route for that time. So this is using the weather routing tool, but we don't really um, use this, uh, the departure planning for our actual route. Um, once we've chosen the time, then we use the weather router. What we do want to look at in here is the tables. And um, and so this is this is really the sort of the, the main meat in the sandwich of um, of this tool. And so we can see we've got departure one, departure two, departure three, and departure four. Our dates, uh, the passage time, and obviously motoring time. <laughs> We're on a motorboat it's the whole time. Uh, and we've got, uh, because I had a, a fuel consumption um, parameter in there, which um, looks like she's used a fair bit of, fair bit of fuel. Um, it's an expensive day out, isn't it? Um, we can see that, uh, you know, how long that passage is taken of, for each departure time. So it is slightly longer on day four. That's possibly our headwinds. Um, and you'll see here that you can see the time uh, into the wind uh, was 92% of the time. So and that's probably why uh, it slowed us slightly. Um, and you can see that the the tool's actually doing what it's meant to do there. Um, and we can see our, our weather stuff, you know, the maximum wind speed, the minimum wind speed, average gusts. Um, and then we see this here, uh, the cape. Um, and so that would be so probably this, that might be our, um, our biggest factor in deciding on whether any of these times are a good time to go or not. I mean, this is very high. Uh, even that, you know, this looks a lot happier to me. Uh, but these are very high CAPE numbers. So CAPE is Convective Available Potential Energy. It's one of the indicators that we use for thunderstorms. Um, and you'll see we've got a bit of rain in there as well. So rain and CAPE together. We'd need to more closely look at when and where we saw that, but probably that rain band that we saw when we were looking at the wind map before is where we would um, see that. Uh, we have our our uh, percentage of, in the different in the different wind speeds, um, and then our wave our wave uh, parameters. And so this is where the um, 
this is why we wanted to know what the boat looked like, like what the underwater part of the boat looked like, because that's modeling how your boat will react in um in in, in all of the the combine uh, all of the wave states. So whether we have a residual swell running, and this would probably be I, I know that this is something that does happen on the lake, but definitely um something that you see a lot of um in the you know off the east coast there you'd see a lot of stuff and and probably the current stuff as well the time the wind against current obviously not as big a deal on the on the lake um but yeah if we were out uh off the east coast gulf stream for instance really big deal um but you'll see here you know time and uh with our role is is good all across we're not rolling around um we vertical acceleration is that's you're lifting up and down so that's uh, a seasickness thing um you know that's what makes people seasick is the up and down uh probably with the roll as well of course um and then boat slamming we've got no boat slamming um so yeah, so it's not none of them look particularly bad so far as sea state goes. I would be interested in what this one looks like, and maybe we can go and uh, run a a weather route for that to more closely look at it because I think that we would probably want to come back and look at what happens with this cape and rain for our time. So you can already see that there's probably a whole lot of stuff. Um, in our departure times that we may not have considered before um maybe all of these are fine maybe but maybe this uh is of concern and you know um we will we'll go and have a look so just so you know that we are looking at um a a combined um model approach here so this output that we're looking at here we are looking at uh, four different weather models are actually combining. We can come in here and go to the detailed um, look and it'll, it'll show us the different models and what those parameters are. Um, so, yeah, but I prefer to just look at the summary uh, here and then go and run some weather routes to look at my route. So, but... We can stay on this um, map and let's just zoom out. Uh, you know, you see we do have our warnings here. Um, yeah, thunderstorms, fog, didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Vertical acceleration, that's what we saw before. So this is where we, we see that, um, you know, the... The rough part of uh, when when we were looking in the the tables just before we could see that on that day four departure that it actually got a bit a bit rough at one point it was getting a bit um yeah, a bit rolly and a bit a bit wavy and so that uh, um yeah wavy from the vertical acceleration point of view and so that's where we see it is where the strong wind is uh, and we're punching into it and the the route is actually trying to keep us out of it a bit there um keep us out of the wind uh if i come over here i can go back and we can have a look at the cape values for the other um departures and see what we what we think and i'm just going back in time and wow yeah okay so would we want to go out there in this? Um, I suspect not. Uh, these are very high cape levels. Um, I just need to change my route. Um, yeah, so we're back on our first departure and yeah I mean we've got really high cape levels um we have got let's have a look at the rain so you need moisture with 
the um, with the cape levels, but you don't need much. And you'll see, yeah, this is sort of popping up. Yeah, I don't know, it's a, probably not the prettiest thing if we go and have a look at the gust as well. Yeah, so we got some pretty, pretty gnarly conditions. And if we get thunderstorms rolling through as well, these gusts, which won't show up in the, um, won't show up in the models because we're looking at averages, they, you know, you could end up with some really, really strong conditions. It is a following sea, but um, yeah, it's definitely some stuff to consider there as to whether we would um, want to do that. So, which day would I go? I'd probably go back and um, look at my weather routing um, and I would probably keep updating this. I might actually go for, um, hang on, if I go back to that Cape, that's probably that's the thing that alarms me the most. <laughs> um, being from New Zealand, I don't see that those levels all that often. Um, you know, that first departure looks gnarly the second one you know could you time it to miss it but it looks like you'd be going straight out into it you know and then the third one so first second third you know the maybe the third day's the best because we possibly don't get that wind. We do get some wind on the nose, but maybe not as much. And we know that we're not getting uh, crazy amounts of vertical acceleration um, and roll, but we could go and run a route for that day. And so that's what you'd do is you'd actually come over here and then go, okay, I'm going to leave. What day is it today? Wednesday. I'm going to leave on um, Saturday. And, um, and you would come in here and you would set up your weather routing uh, for Friday and and then run that route. And then once you run, you know, so then we, we, we still don't necessarily, um, you wouldn't necessarily say that we've decided that this is when we're going to depart, but if we looked at those days and we went, okay, let's go and look at this one. We then run our weather route. And so then we have more information for that day. So, and if I, I've, I've run that route for on Friday, this is my, I'm, I'm in Auckland time, um, and you'll see we've got all this extra data for that time, and you see we still have those high cape levels at the beginning of that passage there, but that might change as the next couple of days go on. We might tentatively put this in there um, and consider whether this is something that we want to look at or not, look for other any other sources of, um, you know, local weather that would uh, tell us more about this, and um, and then, but each time, you, each time the models update, that might pass through sooner, or it actually might get worse. Um, and then our wave height is what I want to look at, uh, so we can look at the wind wave, which is probably I'm expecting that to be most of our uh, stuff, and then, but we can actually see that there is. A, uh, a a slightly different swell and I've actually come down here and have a look at the primary swell there is and the directions is what I want to look at yeah so they are different directions so secondary there's hardly any secondary swell and then I expect that we'll see nothing for tertiary which is pretty much what we would expect on the lake um and if I come back to combined, and yeah, we can just look through this. And then what I want to, oh, there's our fuel consumption. Um, so you'll see that we actually have very low levels of roll um, for our boat, which is pretty important when you're going power boating. Um, so, you know, we're 0 0.4, we're not four <laughs> um, degrees of of roll in RMS. So this is all pretty good. You know, that's it's it's pretty smooth. Um and but we do get a bit of up and down <clears throat> movement. And so, but again, we do get a bit a little bit high here, but 
0.2 is the level that we want to be under there. And, you know, you'll for, for this, once you have run this for your boat and you go out there and you do it, you will be able to, to see it. And obviously we've got no boat slamming. So, you know, this maybe this isn't too bad a time to leave. Um, I guess my big concern would still be uh, what we've talked about already around the um, the thunder potential for thunderstorm activity. So what we might do is come over to the coast and run a different route. And we'll probably just run a route to nowhere. Um, and let's just run this for our power boat first and have a really quick look um, actually I want to run a departure plan so I'll just flick over to that and download and we can just have a look at some of the you know this will probably be uh, I don't know let's see what we get so we've got a whole lot of different factors that we're going to be looking at here. Um, so far as, you know, this, we, we, we know that we're, we're going to run into a ton of current here. Um, so, yeah, so we've run our, our, our departure plan and we, we will really quickly be able to see, you know, this, the passage time, um, our cape, our wind speed, maximum wind, maximum gusts. Um, yeah, we first that first day, it's a lot of heading into the wind, which could be pretty comfortable on our powerboat. Um, and you know, this time reaching, I guess, for a powerboat that should say side to wind or whatever, probably something that we'd want to avoid a lot more. Um, not, not, I don't know many powerboats that like a beam C. Um, and so, you know, this, you know, that that looks pretty good if you left on that first day versus. You know that third day, um, not nice. Uh, and then we can come down here and you know see the wave states as well. I mean, you look at these; you get in these two to three meter waves. Maybe that's fine, depends on your boat. Um, but also, this is really interesting. You know, this is actually all of a sudden looks like it's a pretty. Um, all of them are pretty rough. <laughs> uh, you know. A lot of roll, um, you know, a lot of time and with above four degrees RMS of roll, um, a lot of time above 0.2 Gs of vertical acceleration. Um, so yeah, just not a not a pretty a pretty picture. And you know, we can probably come and have a look at a a wave map and just see if we can get some indication of that. So the difference between the tables and this, this is the combined wind wave and swell. Um, so you have 1.4 meters. Um, zoom out a bit. Yeah, you can see that really builds on that second one. And this is probably why that first day was the the best looking one. But as you see on that, that first departure, we get it on the, on the beam as we come up here. Um, wow. Okay. Or it could be that. <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah, we um, we probably don't want to be out there at all um, for this. Uh, what I will do now is we will go back and do the same thing for a um, power uh, for a for a yacht. Um, unless oh, we can always have some questions at the end. So let's come in here, change our planning preferences. Uh, 20 liters now. I don't know. I don't know in a boat. I don't know in a power boat. So seems like a lot. Uh, anyhow, so we, if we come back in here and we go to, um, we put a yacht polar in, you'll see that we do have um, different stuff. And, you know, we can have our motoring in. Um, you know, so we can put, you know, a motor at five knots when the boat speed is less than 4.5 knots. I've got my wave polar on. You'll see here it says sail mono hull because I'm in a Beneteau 423. Um, and 
uh, it's put my displacement stuff in. Probably should have mentioned before on the powerboat one that you will you'll need to put that in, um, specific to your boat. So we're all set up there for our for our yacht polar. Uh, probably another point here: we can change the models we're using um, for the departure planning. So you can uh, choose different ones. Uh, so it's telling me to only select four. Um, I'll leave it on the um, the four global sort of the the big four global models um you know when we go into our weather routing we'll be able to look at the pwg and the pwe uh and sort of look at their strength as, which is the shorter term uh time frames and the higher resolution and the and you know when we're more coastal so i'll change my route here um i probably should have gone and looked at the currents before but we uh i think i think we're we're, we're all wanna avoid this guy um zoom in on the map grab my waypoint and we'll we'll go the other way this time i think then we're going up to nova scotia so yeah once again we want to do this trip um and we would work we could once again we could go into our local knowledge we could uh you know look at the seasonal weather um and see what you know what what the what the predominant uh wind directions are you know would we is it the right idea to go and do those passages of there if it's all on the nose um you know or or really strong winds all the time at that time of the year you know it might be really hard to find a weather window um but let's assume we've done all that and we yeah once again we could change our time i'll change that to now um you know, see that changed my date there. You know, wherever you are, you can have your time. It's it's defaults to Pacific Auckland because that's where I am. Um, and yeah, you know, we'll just click on click on download <laughs> and uh, see how we go. I bet that coffee's cold now. So this is doing a massive amount of calculations uh, when you when you do this. Um, and you may have just seen there was a little thing that came up on the route there for any of you uh, yachties. Um, if you really, if you want to get into your polars, we have just released our um, AI polars, which you can use with the data hub. It records your, uh, it uses your NMEA data. Um, so your, your boat speed, your wind speed, uh, true wind angle, and feeds that into a, our system that has a very complex algorithm going on and actually tweaks your your boat polars the whole time so you know come year come next year's uh chicago mac you'll have better polars than everyone else or even even just cruising you're getting better routes um so yeah it's it's it's, it's pretty cool so we've run our routes <clears throat> excuse me uh we can run through all the different times and you'll see there the um the gmd assesses showing us this uh, frontal band here, uh, which is interesting. We're obviously on a wave map still. So let's just go to uh, the rain map. Let's see if it makes a liar of me. No, so if I actually just come back here, because that's showing the now. So you'll see that the GMDSS is, this is probably slightly old, but it was showing this frontal band. And so if you ever, um, wonder you know why we look at the rain it's so that we can see these frontal bands and um something else just look at while we're there you know do we look at this we look at the cape on that that frontal band and you'll see that there is some levels of cape uh in there and so you've got basically any cape in a frontal band like that uh, you know that it's going to actually hit quite hard so just something to always keep in mind um i'll go back to the wind map and we will come over to the tables so it's it's exactly the same as what we were looking at before and we want to look at all the same things really i mean i guess your emphasis for power boating is possibly slightly different i mean obviously we you want to have nice winds but i would be focused more on the wave but i mean often that is related to the wind so you know that's they do all tie in 
uh, for sailing. Obviously, if we want to be sailing, we want to think about our uh, our wind speeds. And you'll see here, this one is, you know, particularly light. Uh, you know, our minimum wind speeds and even our average wind speed here is 7.8 knots. So, um, you know, we do really start to think about different things when we are, uh, um, you know, looking at, at yachting. And, and uh, I guess even though we've got motoring settings on, these days, um, these uh, the, the 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 time it takes for each passage is actually quite quite different, you know. So our fastest one is actually uh, day three, and um, you know, and we've got a lot more motoring on day one and and day four. We don't really have any crazy cape levels like we've seen previously, <laughs> thankfully, um, and then yeah, and then. Obviously, uh, when we're going cruising, we would like to be reaching and sailing downwind. Um, so, yeah, different consideration to our power boating. Um, you know, we really want, we really want these. And so, you know, power boating, we're looking for for for, for different stuff. I mean, sailing, uh, um, powering, motoring into a into a sea is often quite a uh, a comfortable thing, um, so long as it's not too big. Um, but yeah, definitely better than a beam sea. Whereas uh, when we're yachting, you know, reaching's uh, probably, and a lot of boats are uh, reaching to sort of broad reaching is probably our optimum angle. Uh, you'll see here yeah, our, our time and those different um, wind speeds. You know, this is a very light route and you see why that's got the motoring and to be fair, the, the sailing might be pretty average as well. Um, you know, whereas this day three, there's a lot more, um, you know, a lot more, a uh, lot stronger winds or better winds. Um, and we reach and run a lot. So, you know, it looks like a pretty good option. Um, so, yeah, and then we can also look at our, uh, our wave stuff. Does get pretty uh, rolly by the looks of it um, on day three. So that might be something we want to consider, but it might also be something that we can live with. And so we would then go and run our weather routing. Um, you know, I would probably have a look at this day three. It's the fastest. It's got the most wind. Uh, it's got reaching. Um, and yeah, so I guess my big concern would be, what does this look like? Uh, is it actually going to be really bad? or you know and, and what's creating that and so again we would then go away and go okay i want to leave on um on the 25th and we would then look at run our weather routing and go and i would specifically the first thing i'd go and look at is why do i get um you know everything else looks great right we've got good wind you know it's all reaching it's all downwind but why do we get this what's going on that i'm getting um these you know i'm going to spend basically half my trip in really rolly conditions um and is it just above four or around there and is that going to be okay do I, i'd look at all the different uh wave directions and then um and go from there okay and yeah i think that i can probably wrap yeah. that part there and we can answer some questions yeah, Nick, it's Kevin. Um, I, I hope you will take a few minutes here and uh, talk a little bit about under the weather routing, the different options um, under the, um, like the, the comfort settings, I guess is the, what I always refer yeah. to it as, and just how dramatically those will uh, change your route. Um, you know, for a lot of us that are either returning from Mackinac or just planning to go somewhere, uh, you know, around the Great Lakes, the, the, the departure planning certainly can help us figure out maybe the days or a little less than that, like tomorrow versus tomorrow afternoon or something like that for the departure. Yep. But once you get to actually planning that route, how dramatically you can skew it with those comfort settings. Yeah, uh, so you can skew it a lot. Um, so you'll see what, just for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about here, in our routing preferences. So just, so really good 
really good uh, that you've brought this up because it's probably something that I should have covered is in the departure planning, it is always running for the fastest time. So it's it's never using the comfort setting. So you see here, in the, I'm over in the weather routing now and we have two options. We have fastest time and comfort. And so in comfort, I can get the router to try and avoid uh, can wind speeds that are greater than 25 knots uh, for upwind reaching downwind. You know, I can change those parameters around. I can make this 35 knots or whatever. Um, and I can also try and avoid um, the wave heights of, of different different heights. Uh, I guess my caveat around this is I think that if you do your um, departure planning well, uh, and you, you know, you, you're sailing to the weather, not uh, a schedule. I wouldn't, you know, you don't have to use this. So there's a few things here. I mean, if 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 it's a small deviation, um, you know, that's fine. But this will literally route you all over the ocean to avoid these conditions. And then then if it can't, it will default back to the fastest route. Um, but it will it will send you a long way to avoid these conditions. And so if you use this, I would always run fastest time first, and then I would run a comfort setting and have a look um, and see, you know, where it is that, um, you know, that it's sending me. If it's not a massive deviation and it's not a whole lot, uh, more time on the water then maybe that's the right thing to do um, but you can you know you could look at that and you, you know or you could you could run fastest time and you could put a boundary in to avoid a particular area where you thought it wasn't nice um, so yeah it is I, I'm not a super fan of this um, but I know that it is used a lot um, but I just yeah I'm more of in the school of uh, run the fastest route assess the conditions, look for the nasty bits and then plan to avoid them rather than um, letting the tool make that decision for me. Um, you know, let's remember where this is a tool and we're the ones in control of the boat and this is going to do its best to alert us to all those things. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm definitely a fan of um, fastest time. Something that you do need to be really aware of, I guess, under on a passage is when you're using fastest time is that it is often trying to um, route you to to, to to stronger winds, you know, because generally stronger winds will be faster. And so, so that's something to think about as well. So maybe that's when you might, you know, you might, you might put some of these limits in and, but always good to compare um, the two outputs, you know, fastest time versus comfort. Right. Uh, at least one thing is it, uh, you know, if you're, for example, one person mentioned the return back from Mackinac, it, it, the model can only send you so far. You're on a lake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I guess, you know, return, I would be, I'll be looking at my my my, my departure planner um a lot uh, and, and looking for a big 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 windows. I do you, you know I assume you can leave when you want um within reason. Within reason. Yeah. Uh what would you recommend uh for someone who was and it's a lot like the return from Mackinac, uh cruising, you know, planning to go, let's say north. Uh, on Lake Michigan and go from harbor to harbor to harbor. Um, <clears throat> how would you how would you recommend uh, doing that? Would you recommend sort of laying out that first departure plan? Uh, you know, hey, I'd, I'd like to leave this weekend and go as far as around here. The harbors are you know within thirty miles or twenty miles of each other generally, and then sort of do it stepwise and say, okay, now I'm going to plan another departure. I'm going to set it in the future going from here to here. And yeah, I, I mean, how, that's how long I'm laid up. Yeah. And so the, um, there's two things there. So yeah, I mean, that's at the moment, that's basically the, 
only way you could do it. You know, you can run a route in the future, weather route in the future, or a departure plan in the future. Um, either or, I'd probably, if I was doing that, you might. It sounds like you're almost quite schedule so you'd probably be running uh, weather routing. We uh, are actually putting together a feature that does have a layover, so you can have your waypoint and it has a layover time in it. Um, and so that would actually be that's exactly what that is for, is to is to do that. Um, I'm not sure if you know where that's at, Karen. Karen, Karen. There she is. Oh, she's there. She was <laughs> trying there. To, trying to unmute myself. Sorry, pushing buttons. Um, no, I don't know where that's at at the moment, but um, that it's going to be great when it happens. Yeah, yeah. So there is a yeah. It's a definitely a recognised um use case, and yeah, something that we do want to add. Yeah, I would say that the uh, at least the bulk of the use um for those of us here in Chicago uh, is does involve being able to stop at night, you know, sort of, it becomes in some ways, harbor planning <clears throat> going yeah. from X to Y, Y to Z. Um, I just need to get some idea of roughly yeah. what days that'll work. Yeah. And that's, you know, I mean, I would, I would still, um, you know, even for your 30, 40, uh, 50 mile passages I would still just run my route or even in the morning or the night before run run your departure planning and 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 you know look at the differences of, for different times of the day um it's you know and and just see you know because if, if you leave you know leaving at midday uh was going to be a beautiful trip versus a bumpy morning you know you'd do that had take the sleep in or it might be actually we've got a get on the road at eight o'clock um, and miss, you know, the, 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 the 30 knots in the afternoon. So, um, you know, that's, that can be more obvious, you, you know, you can sort of see that stuff in maps, but the, the tool will really, um, you know, alert you to things that you may not see and um, definitely make that quite a simple process. And then how might you recommend, uh, this is sort of an extra uh, complication on top of that. How might you recommend dealing with, uh, what we call sort of crossing the lake, that the weather over time might be different on one side versus the other. And do you want to, let's say you're you're returning from the race to Mackinac, do you want to get across to the western shore of the lake or stay on the eastern shore? Again, would that be using the departure planning at that higher level? Uh, I think, I think what you're really talking about there is, you know, you, you, you know, you can make it do whatever you want with, um, if I just go to this weather routing page here, um, you know, I can, uh, put a boundary in. So, you know, I can say, oh, I don't, I don't want to go up into here. Um. You know, and so the router will respect this area. Um, so you could you could make that decision um, to do that, or you could put your um, comfort setting in, and it, it might push you over. You know, follow that same sort of s type of thinking that you're thinking. You know, I, I want to be on this side of the lake regardless. Um, so there is more than one way to do it. You can also um, same as uh you know in the race uh you can add waypoints and so i can come in here and i can add waypoints to the route and then i can actually make them uh so these are all go-to waypoints so i can move them anywhere i want um and then i could make it a a a, a port rounding um or a starboard rounding so that it'll, it won't actually go to it it'll just leave it to port or starboard the same as you would a, a mark in a yacht race. Um, but you don't, uh, the difference being there is that it may be better for you to go um, up into this, you know, up here or out here. And so it won't necessarily take you to it, but it won't send you over the other side of it. So there is ways to force the router to do things that you would like to do for whatever reason you'd like it to do that, which, 
you do find um, in, um, you know, there's lots of situations outside of racing where you want to do this. You know, there might be a particular, you, you, know, you might want to avoid a lee shore, like the router's not thinking about that. And you might want to put a boundary in like this so that, you know, you, you miss that area. Or if you're out here, you know, and you, you're down here, that you might want to, um, you know, put a boundary around here because you know that there's current around there or, um, you know, nasty piece of water. And so, yeah, you can force the router to do those things, which are um, semen-like things that, that that only we can think about and that the, the, the algorithm can't. Great. Um, if anyone has any uh, any questions, you can uh, again let's throw them in the Q and A before we uh, before we wrap up. I uh, I hope I got to a couple of things that I think people would be uh, would be thinking of when whether it's returning from Mac or going up the lakes just for for pleasure. Cool. All right. It sounds like seems like that's uh, that's going to be it. Anything else you wanted to cover, just in terms of setting up the account? I don't know if everybody here has an account or the various options that that are out there for you know what what plans you have to get you what coverage or what tools. Yeah. Yeah. So to do. With the routing or departure planning, you need a, a standard or pro account. Um, and then uh, the wave um, stuff is uh, you get more detail in the in the pro account um, and the more of the the high resolution modeling. the The routing tool is still using the high resolution, but it's about viewing it. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, but both of those are um you need a standard or a pro you know the polar generation that, that you do in the data hub that's a pro feature um so yeah but either or if you want to dip your toe in um you know the the standard might be the way to go but you know it's uh you know having a nice time out on the water if you can help help with that and um not end up in bad conditions um there's definitely uh, you know, I'd just go for the the best I could get personally. Um, you know, keep everyone happy. You know, that's something to think about as well. Is that, you know, when we're cruising and that it's a, you know, we want to keep everyone um, on board happy and enjoying it. So you know, really nailing your weather stuff um, can be a pretty big deal to achieving that. So yeah. All right. All right. Well, if uh, if there were no other questions, I think we can we can wrap that again. I'm gonna remind everybody that this was recorded, so uh, you can always go back and review it. No, I didn't quite get that or understand that. Uh, and folks can contact your support group at um, at Predict. Yeah, one hundred percent. If you have any questions, please reach out to our support team. Um, they're awesome and knowledgeable, and they're all uh, Bodies and. Um, yeah, so support at predictwin.com. And yeah, they'll help you out with any questions you have. Oh, uh, and Karen just took care of one question. So that's. Uh, see, that's, see that's how efficient they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you both, Nick and Karen, uh, for your time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening. I hope you got something out of it. It is, uh, I, I will just speak from personal experience. It is an amazing tool, but it takes a time commitment and some some learning and playing around and making mistakes to get used to. So, um, you know, I hope everybody will put some, uh, put, uh, get, get that process started for yourselves. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so all. much. Have a wonderful day, Nick and Karen, everybody else have a wonderful evening. See you at the club. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye.